Welcome to our lesson about SolidWorks Simulation. Simulation comes as part of the SolidWorks Premium Package. It offers more advanced simulation capabilities than Simulation Express. Let's go check out the SolidWorks website for a minute. Let me just pull it up here. Here you can see the difference between simulation as a part of SolidWorks Premium and the SolidWorks Simulation Professional and Simulation Premium editions of SolidWorks. Both of these offer much more capability regarding simulation. Like Simulation Express, in SolidWorks Simulation, we make a few assumptions that can limit us. First of all, the deformation must be linear. Or, in other words, if I apply one pound of force to result in a one millimeter deformation, consequently two pounds of force should result in a two millimeter deformation. And as you know, many materials don't actually work this way. The type of material that follows this law, however, is steel, for example. The second assumption we make is that the deformation must be small and proportionate to the size of the part. The last assumption is that the load must be static, or in other words, the load, pressure, force, torque, etc. doesn't change over time. Having stated our assumptions, let's go ahead and activate simulation. I'll go to Tools, Add-ins. Next to Simulation, I'll check the box on the left, and I'll also check the box on the right. This is the startup box. If I check this box, simulation will launch when SolidWorks launches. Let's click OK. The simulation menu now appears as part of the Windows menu strip. The simulation tab is also visible now. In my graphic area is a part similar to the one I used in my overview of Simulation Express. What I'd like to do is run approximately the same study so that you can better compare these two add-ins. Let's start by creating a new study. We can click on the Study Advisor submenu and select New Study, or just choose Study from the Simulation drop-down menu. Since I'm running the SolidWorks Premium version of Simulation, under Type, only the Static option is available to me. Name. Let's leave the default name in place, Static1, and click OK. Now, you may have noticed that the simulation interface is similar to that of Simulation Express. That, of course, makes it easier to transition from Simulation Express to the full version of simulation. Can you guess what the first thing we've got to do is? Let's set the fixture. Right-click on Fixtures in the Study tree. We can select the type of fixture. Or we can click on the Fixtures Advisor up above. I'm going to select Fixed Geometry. The first option here is Fixed Geometry. This basically sets the degree of freedom to zero. We've got a preview in the example window. Another type of fixture that's available is called Roller Slider. And we see this in the preview as well. Let's try the Fixed Hinge. Let's expand the Advanced section now. We can choose Symmetry, Circular Symmetry, Use Reference Geometry, on flat faces, on cylindrical faces, on spherical faces. For this example, I'm going to go with fixed geometry. And let's scroll down. Under symbol settings, we can change the symbol's color, the size, the visibility, whether to show the symbols or not. I'm going to select this face. And, for example, if I want to hide the symbols, I'll uncheck the Show Preview checkbox. At this point, let's click OK. Fixed 1 is now added to our study tree. Now it's time to apply an external load. I can do it a couple different ways. Right-click on the External Loads folder and select from a number of load types. Force, Torque, Pressure, Gravity, Centrifugal, Bearing Load, etc. Or I can expand the External Loads submenu and select from the flyout. Let's go with Force. Here we've got the option to apply a force or a torque. I'm going to select Force, and then I'll select a face. We can apply the force normal to our selection, or we can use a selected direction. I'm going to enter a value of 100 pounds. 
the reverse direction checkbox lets you reverse the direction of the force's application. If I've selected more than one face, I can specify whether to apply the force per item or in total. The total option is currently grayed out since I only selected one face. Let's take a look at symbol settings down below. Color, size, show hide preview. I can also set non-uniform distribution. At this point, I'm going to click OK. And the force is now added to our study tree. In order to change a name, by the way, in the study tree, you can give it a slow double click and then just type in your new name and press enter. Last thing to do is apply a material. Let's right click on our part, select apply edit material. Let's use steel 1020, apply and close. Notice that the material in our study is different than the material of our part in the feature manager. Now we're ready to run our study. Let's right click on study one and select run. We can also select run from the simulation drop down menu. Under results, by default, we've got three different plots stress, displacement, and strain. At the top left, we see the model name, the study name, the plot type, and the deformation scale. In our case, the deformation scale is 1. That means we see the actual deformation. On the right side is a color spectrum scale that may look familiar to you from Simulation Express. Minimum to maximum stress is distributed across this color spectrum from blue to red. In our case, the minimum stress is 11.2 psi, and the maximum is approximately 18,000 psi. That's about two and a half times less than the yield strength of our material, which is approximately 51,000 psi. Based on this number, I know that my material is not going to fail. I also see the stress distribution color-coded on my part. The maximum stress is coded in red, and that's near the bolt hole. Red doesn't mean bad, it just means that that's the area with the maximum stress. Our factor of safety is, after all, over 2. Let's take a look at how we can animate our plot. First thing to do is select the plot in the study tree. That'll activate it. Currently, stress is the active plot. Let's right-click and select Animate. And here's our animation. We're also able to specify the number of frames, as well as the speed, forward only, loop the animation, and reciprocate the animation. We've also got the option to save our movie as an AVI file. Under Options, we specify the desired codec or compressor, as well as the file location. Here's a list of available codices. Let's cancel out of this window. Let's uncheck Save as AVI file and exit the animation. To add another plot, just right-click on Results and select the plot from the available menu. I'm going to choose a Factor of Safety plot. Here we select the desired components. Since I've only got one part, I'll select All. Under Criteria, I'm going to select Automatic for now. And then let's click the next arrow at the top of the Property Manager. Multiplication factor, let's leave it as 1, next. Now areas below the factor of safety, let's say 5. The minimum factor of safety is 2.8. Let's click Accept. The area in red on our model shows where the factor of safety is below 5. In the top left is a summary of our plot. Red shows the factor of safety under 5, and blue shows where the factor of safety is above 5. Lastly here, to delete a study, simply right-click on the Study tab at the bottom of the screen, and then choose Delete. This concludes our overview of simulation.